This week, to celebrate MetPie Monday number 200, that's right, 200 weeks of MetPie, we're going to be talking with MetPie's lead developer, Ryan May, about where did MetPie get started and where's it going. Welcome to another MetPie Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata, and this week we're doing things a little differently. We've got Dr. Ryan May on the call. Ryan, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So Ryan, can you tell folks who you are and what your background is? Sure. So I am a software engineer at Unidata, and um, I've been here now for almost eight years. And before that, I was at the University of Oklahoma working on a lot of uh, studying weather radar and working on dual polarization algorithms and signal processing and really focused on remote sensing and research. And then somewhere in there, I realized that I was much better and more interested in writing software than I was at studying um, the unknown and trying to work on cutting edge research, but instead making tools for people is where, where my passion lies. Great. So that sounds like sort of where MetPy got its start was during your, your PhD. So how did that evolve? How did MetPy come to be? So it started with after trying to get away from MATLAB one afternoon and discovering this thing called Python back in about 2006. And that became very promising in terms of doing some computational uh, scripted analysis. And I realized the potential there for trying to replace some of the um, custom tools we work with in meteorology and atmospheric science. And so at that point, after a few years of trying to work with these tools and realizing there was just a, a need to have some meteorological functionality, um, starting to get together with a few fellow grad students, Eric Bruning, Patrick Marsh, Sean Arms, and we started trying to build up this toolkit uh, during our quote unquote spare time in grad school. Okay, so you started trying to build this up to replace MATLAB, which is a great goal. And what version was Python at in 2006? I think in 2006, we were looking at about Python 2.3 and somewhere, I think, shortly thereafter, maybe 2.4. But this is back in the dark ages of Python, early versions of Python 2. Yes, yeah, so the language has evolved a lot since 2006. Oh, it, the whole language and ecosystems come a long way, not just with you know lots of versions of Python, but... Now, that was when NumPy was new, replacing this other library called Numeric. Uh, there was no such thing as X-Array or even Pandas. Matplotlib was at version 0 0.98. Um, so a lot of things have changed in the intervening 15 years. Right. So how did MetPy go from being a, a group of grad students to being a Unidata project? Sure. So after all of us in grad school went off to various full-time jobs and getting out of grad school. Um, I took a job working in the private sector and then moved on to come to Unidata back in 2014. And after working there and communicating with our community, realized that the community had a growing need and a real, um, real thirst to have more support for using Python. And so gradually in 2015 and then finally officially in 2016, Unidata um, started its official Python group and we kind of brought MetPy out of retirement and made it active again and really started trying to drive it forward in earnest, growing from, you know, this conglomeration of various pieces of code that grad students put together and trying to actually build a full-fledged library. Um, a lot of the pieces, a lot of people you still use today or were, you know, using a lot today were there in the early versions, such as the SKU T code, um, the unit framework that we use that's really based on a library called Pint, and um, the beginnings of some of the calculations like wind direction and heat index. Okay, so putting all of this together, I mean, making a library is not a small feat anyway, but is, is doing the calculations and the plotting the hard part? Is it the infrastructure that's the hard part? The, the bug tracking? Where are the difficult parts of maintaining something that's got as many users as MetPy does now? I'd say the challenges are in trying to trying to really take time to make sure we don't break our users, trying to make sure we get things right, um, trying to sometimes it's 
dealing with install issues. A lot of the challenges, I'm sure no one's shocked by this, revolves around trying to help people with their condo environments and sorting all of that out. Um, and I guess really, in many cases with NetPy, the challenge is in some of the calculations and trying to track down what a canonical reference or something is. The intricacies of how everybody calculates CAPE and all the different variations on how that calculation is done and many other things. There are, it's, it's surprisingly hard sometimes to track down a, a good reference, a, a nice scholarly source to cite for how we're implementing calculation. Um, but when you have that, and, and even then, once you have a source, you don't necessarily have a good source of reference data. You know, it'd be really nice to just have a simple paper to go to for something, open it up and say, okay, if I throw out these parameters, I get this answer and make sure the code does that. And it's actually very rare that it's that easy to implement something. Right. I know in some of the issues, I've seen a lot of, a lot of work going into tracking down things that seem very, like they should be nailed down, like fundamental constants in our field. Oh yeah, there, we put a lot of effort into before the 1.0 release trying to nail down values for many of these constants. Um, you know, things like what's the uh, the latent heat of water and things you think of as constants, depending on your point of view, they aren't necessarily constants. Things that are you know moderate to weak functions of temperature, depending on your use case, you disregard that and treat it as a constant. In some cases. That variation is very much an important part of the the science you're using it for. So that is one of the challenges with NetPy is trying to strike a balance between being the most widely applicable um, to a broad set of use cases, but without necessarily unnecessarily pinning things into um, into a corner to allow their users to escape that when they need to. Right, because you've got a, a wide variety of users and. Uh, you know, speaking of those users, I know a lot of folks have been wondering, you know, MetPy Mondays are, are great, but they're not as good as an in-person workshop. So are workshops going to be able to come back anytime soon? Anytime soon is relative. Um, so I don't see that happening um, given the, the impacts of uh, COVID-19. Uh, we're not looking at any in-person style workshops, you know, for the I'd say at least six months. Um, we do want to get back to those because it's a great way for us to reach our community, interact with them. I guess um, I say that and there is a short course planned for the AMS annual meeting in uh, Houston in January of 2022. That's kind of the, the lone exception because a lot of places aren't really allowing visitors right now. Um, but we have been embarking on trying to do more virtual workshops and doing, uh, we just got done uh, last week or a week or two ago doing a afternoon session about four hours on uh, introduction to MetPy and going through some of the calculations, plotting, um, working on satellite data, model output, things like that. And so we are trying to do more of the virtual workshops and at least have that to build an offer to our community. And so if anyone's interested in those, keep an eye out. We'll be announcing more of those as we put them together. Great. And what are some of the other ways people can get involved with MetPy? Sure. So we're always happy to have um, beyond just more users. And if you want to learn how to use MetPy and you know, stumble upon this this uh, video, then you know we have our documentation online. If you Google for MetPy docs, that would be the first hit there. Um, but as far as you want to go beyond using the library and participate and help out, a um, great place to start is on our GitHub site. So if you uh, go to github.com slash unidata slash MetPy, there's the uh, issue tracker there. And so you can go through and look at the issues and try and help um, at the very least try and reproduce some of these problems that people reported. Or there's also a discussion forum there where people ask questions or you can share um, examples you've worked on. And then beyond that, if you want to contribute to the code, add a new feature, um, some calculation that you find to be missing, then you can open up a GitHub pull request. And there's a contributor's guide within our documentation that can try to guide you through the process. All right, great. And so the last thing that I wanted to ask you was, what are some of the things on the roadmap for MetPy? We've had it for quite a while now. Where is it going? So we are fortunate enough to be awarded uh, another, um, get another award from the National Science Foundation this past spring. And so um, that work's starting in earnest now. And the focus of that work will be to try and 
improve MetPy's performance and its ability to scale to large data sets. So a lot of that means really improving our, um, if not integration, at least working with Dask arrays. So Dask is a powerful framework for working with what we call out of core arrays, arrays that are bigger than you can necessarily fit in the memory on your computer. It also lends itself very nicely to distributed computing. And so you can do computations with large sets of data, such as you know, climate model ensembles. And so we're trying to help MetPy scale that because we've had a lot of users who try to use some of our functions. Cape is the infamous one where people have used our Cape function on grids and just let it run for nine hours on a massive data set. And so we want to try and not have people wait that long for some of our calculations and try and bring more of what MetPy has to offer, make it applicable to more use cases in a, a reasonable uh, amount of time. So a lot of it's going into the either looking at some compiler app, com, uh, compiling code and trying to take care of some bottlenecks that way, but also branching out into more support for Dask and things like that. And so hopefully, you know, we're gonna, at the end of this award, the MetPy you use today will be a lot to, a lot faster for whatever kind of data you're using. Great. So is there anything else you'd like to add to our celebration of 200 MetPy Mondays before we sign off this week? Uh, only that when I got this started again, this has gone beyond my wildest dreams of the amount of success I thought we could have. And I'm really happy with the way we've been able to uh, make a difference to our community of users and hopefully make everyone's life easier using Python for meteorology and atmospheric science. All right, great. Well, as always, we hope that you found this useful, enlightening, and entertaining, and we'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.